of 30 plus people. We spoke also of where a church is in its developmental cycle. And this is an attempt to describe, um, to illustrate that church life cycle. I have a laser pointer, this would be a time to use it. When a church is being born, um, it's a period of high excitement and brings often rapid growth. When a church has been around for a while and has stabilized, it's a period of maturity <coughs> for the church. And it's also often when the church hits a plateau, when um, new people come but don't stay, when the offerings have leveled off, and hit a plateau, so call it a glass seal. And if the church, if a mature church, is not intentional and stays on the plateau too long, it will enter into a period of decline that left unaddressed will lead to the end of the church, the death. Now, death does not necessarily mean that the church closes. Um, I would suggest in many places, um, we have lots of examples of the walking dead. <laughs> Churches that continue to, we've always done it this way, we've been here, we're always going to be here, no, we don't want to do anything different. So I refer to those lovingly as the walking dead. And this red um, arrow is intended to indicate that it is possible, no matter where <laughs> you are in the cycle, it is possible to re-enter into a time of rapid growth uh, and excitement and vibrancy, but you must be very intentional about making the decision to do that or else the natural progression will lead to um, <coughs> decline and death. In churches with rapid growth, there is a very positive attitude toward change. It's easy for newcomers to become part of what's happening. There's an ongoing emergence of new leadership People in the church are willing to take on new risks and challenges. It's easy to gain a sense of belonging. The organization is still flexible enough. Um, the community is, is developing a dream. And even though the capacity to incorporate newcomers into the dream may be inadequate. They, it's easy to come into and be part of the community, but if your, if your ideas are not consistent with the vision that called the community together in the first place, it might be a little harder to influence the actual dream, the actual vision, but it is possible. A church that is in rapid growth has a board that is willing to give permission and encouragement to new ideas. And the pastor is usually creative and innovative, <laughs> attracting, encouraging, and supporting new leaders. In churches that are mature, usually the goal has been reached, whatever the goal might have been, it has been reached. If the church owns property, the buildings are often paid for. How long someone has been in the church becomes very important at times of decision making. 
Old timers have more influence than newcomers in mature churches. When you listen to the people of the church, they will talk about what they used to do. It lives off of its memories. Groups become distinct and rigid. This is the way we do this. It's our committee that's in charge of the social. How dare you do your cake? The church will defend the past. We have always been the best, the biggest, the brightest. No matter what's going on right now, we've always been. And it said that when you burn the mortgage, the church dies. There's no more challenge. It's all about what we're protecting, what we used to do, what we used to be. The board resists the introduction of change because the church is just fine the way it is. And the pastor is often protected, protective of proven leaders who I trust and is often reluctant to introduce transformative change. It's a mature church. In churches that are on a plateau, they are not as responsive to new people, kind of put up a little resistance. New people coming into the church have to fit a certain mold. The dream, what was once a dream, has now taken a rigid form. Belonging, gaining a sense of this church is mine, becomes more difficult for new people. <clears throat> Begin to see the emergence of an old guard. These are the ones who have always done a particular ministry, have always been the leaders of the church, have always been the way down, have always been the treasurer old bar. The process of decision making slows down. It's still a healthy church, or can still be a healthy church. But the board begins to restrict its permission giving. It discourages new ideas. And the pastor is often cautious focuses more on doing things right than on doing the right thing. In churches that are in decline, there's no future-orientated goal. Conflict within the church may be high and frequent. Attendance drops. Finances decline. It's unable to attract a pastor. Blame is usually placed on MCC. <laughs> the board is inclined to control everything to assure our survival. And the pastor is often angry and frequently. and leadership structure. In a family-type church, if there is a pastor, because frequently in a family-sized church, we don't need a pastor, we can do this ourselves, is the attitude of the lay people. So if there is a pastor, the pastor is very part-time, is expected to function primarily as the family chaplain, take care of us. Marry us, baptize us and our children, bury us, and keep us entertained for 10 minutes on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor in the size church usually does not stay long, unless the pastor or the pastor's partner is the head of the family. 
in a church of this size, the leadership structure is such that the head of the family makes most of the decisions, whether the head of the family is on the board or not. The structure, role, and process of the board of directors is very informal. Um, make decisions by text message. <laughs> Ooh, that rang a bell. <laughs> Uh, usually a church of the size will have a musician who may or may not be compensated, but they're very small the staff. In a village type church, the pastor is the hub of the wheel, coordinates everything that's going on in the church, and is also the chief minister, is the one who um, um, this is why the other model is called pastor centered church. Because the pastor is directing everything, not necessarily doing everything, but directing everything, but is expected in a church this size to do a lot. This is uh, one of the most difficult sized churches to pastor uh, on a less than full time basis because the expectations are so very. The ministry leaders, meaning the lay people in the church, uh, are task doers, um, and they are <coughs> most of them will do the task because they like the pastor. They have a close relationship with the pastor. If the pastor asks them to do something, they will do it. If another, if a member of the board asks them to do something, they may not do it. But if the pastor asks, yes. Other staff in a village type church may include a musician and an, even a church administrator. Either or both are usually part time and may or may not be compensated. In a city type church, the pastor oversees everything but does not personally direct the church's programs and ministries. Groups, teams, committees have their own empowered lay leaders. And they plan and implement the church's programs and activities. Other staff, one or more of whom is ordained, are program specialists. So they are hired, brought on staff in order to do a specific thing. The only staff member in the church that should be a generalist is the pastor. Everyone else who is on staff needs to be a specialist on staff in order to focus the best of his or her, or, or her time on a particular aspect of the life of the church. It's what we call program specialists. In a nation type, our miracle, more than 150 people, the pastor functions as a chief executive officer um, it's often someone with mythic qualities. <laughs> someone who supports the staff that oversee the programs and ministers. Staff often include several ordained people, including full-time professionals in charge of program areas, and the program groups, teams, and committees have virtual autonomy to operate their programs as almost independent organizations. And relationship style. In a family type church, it's very informal leadership style. I'm sorry, not relationship, leadership style. A handful of volunteers run the church. If there is a pastor, he or she frequently does not become an influential policymaker before three or four or even more years. But a pastor usually does not stay more than four years. And the structure, role, and process of the board of directors is very informal. The text messaging on decisions. In a village type church, the leadership structure is such that it has a hands on working board. Structure of the church, how the church organizes itself, becomes more important, more prominent in the considerations of 
in what's considered by the leadership. The pastor and the board, usually in that order, have most of the authority to make policy <coughs> decisions. Board members, sometimes with much help from the pastor, do everything. Um, it's a very clear example of a working board, a hands-on working board. The members serve a primary or active role in implementing the policies that they adopt. In a nation type, the distribution of influence and power has changed so that the pastor becomes the number one authority figure and the board second. The pastor holds a remarkably large amount of power, usually accumulated through three or more of the following sources. The pastor's skill, knowledge, racial or ethnic or national or religious subculture, the pastor's leadership ability, initiative, productivity, and competence as a preacher, teacher, administrator, worship leader, <coughs> pastor, the pastor's tenure, seniority, age, experience, and personality. <laughs> By tenure, we're, we refer to how long the pastor has been in the position. Seniority, we refer to, refers to uh, whether the, um, if the pastor is the newest leader in the church, then there's less influence. If the pastor has been around long enough to have appointed, selected, nurtured, mentored, risen up leaders within the church, then the pastor's influence will be greater. And age, if the pastor is younger than most of the people in the church, the pastor's influence will be less. If the pastor is older than most of the people in the church, the influence will be greater than the pastor's experience, and ultimately the pastor's personality. Sometimes a substantial chunk of power and influence is held by other paid staff members. A larger share of power in a church of this type, of this size, is deposited in committees. And the board focuses primarily on developing strategy, establishing policy, and matters related to financial development. 